Hello everybody, today we are going live with Karen Gutman Weber. Let's see if I know how to invite her. Amazing. I see you. I hear you. One second. Let me just make the volume louder. All right. Thank you, whoever's joining at this time. All right. Thanks, Karen, for coming on. So let's get right into it and talk about what prompted this um, this, this live that we're having, because I think it was like a very organic um, and good idea. Thank you, Faye. And thank you for having me. And thank you to everybody who joined and is joining. Um, so I'm Karen Gutman Weber. I am a mental licensed mental health counselor in private practice in Cedarhurst. Um, I work a lot with um, individuals who are dating. Um, I also work with couples and family. And something I was thinking a lot about recently um, were things that come up in dating, things that could make dating a bit easier, as well as later on when someone's in a relationship or married, things that really... Um, could be dealt with and, and might be helpful for people to know earlier on. Um, again, I think it's useful. What we're going to talk about today, I think is useful really at any stage in life. I think that I'm a big believer in awareness. And when I learned the attachment theory, which we're going to discuss today, um, I think that it relates really to any human being, which we'll discuss as to why. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just like, whenever you learn it, whenever you gain that awareness, it can just help from that point on. Absolutely. I love that. And I'm very interested in this topic. So let's jump right in. Okay. Let's talk about attachment theory and you break it down because you're the expert in this, not me. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to ask you to stop me, ask a question if I'm going either too fast or unclear. Attachment is one of those things that as a therapist, you talk about all the time and you forget that it's not just spoken about all the time by everybody. Exactly. So um, I remember learning it and not feeling clear. And it's one of those things I'm going to really try to make relatable because once you can see it uh, in your everyday life, it becomes very clear to you. Mm -hmm. But again, it's, it's not just regularly taught, which I forget. Amazing. Okay. Okay. So the attachment theory was created by somebody named John Bowlby. And mm -hmm. he was a psychotherapist who studied the way that people relate. And the reason that this pertains to everybody is because the way we, we relate originally comes from our relationship, of course, with our parents, our original caretakers. So what happens to us in childhood, which we don't necessarily think about when we're dating um, or married, uh, mm -hmm. is that the way that we related in our home is how we end up pursuing friends, what kind of friendships we have, what kind of people we date, how we are in a relationship, who we are in a relationship, what role we take on. Um, and it's very hard to be objective about that because I think we all sort of walk around thinking like, oh, everybody probably does this the same way or this just happens to me um, <laughs> rather than, oh, this is how I grew up. That's actually affecting how I see people and how I relate to them. Correct. And I think at a certain point, people realize like, oh, I have this pattern, but not necessarily connected to an attachment. And I think that the, what's special about the attachment theory is because it really breaks down clearly. So and when you can actually like contain like what your pattern is, and it makes sense, and then how to go about like, we'll talk about changing it or adjusting it. I think that's like where people are like, oh, my God, I didn't know that this is like a thing that certain people fall into these kind of patterns. And it's not just random that this is how I am. <laughs> Exactly. Um, and it didn't just happen to me. And what I love about that is sometimes we can be in, in pain in a friendship, in a dating situation and think like, I can't believe I picked this kind of guy again. Mm -hmm. um, and what happens is when we can look at it from this perspective, we can say, oh, of course I did. Hold on. If there's nothing else to be gained from this live, I just want to say we can change our attachment pattern like that. That would be the takeaway that I would love anybody to have is we all come from what we come from. There's pain in growing up. Mm -hmm. um, there's, there's difficulties in what we experience, what we end up doing sometimes, but change is always possible. And the one thing that leads to change is awareness. So that's what we're here for today. I'm mm -hmm. going to do my best to describe the four types of attachment and try to give a relatable way for you to see which one you may fall into. You'll probably also recognize your friends mm -hmm. and also like 
uh, your favorite characters in a book, your favorite character in a movie, they all pop up. Mm -hmm. And just having that awareness um, of what's called, so there's one kind, which I'm, I'll get into, but that's called secure. And mm -hmm. then there's three types that fall into a category called insecure. Okay. So most people so, are going to... But you know, if I'm looking down, it's because I'm taking some notes. Of course. I think better um, writing, yeah. So in the insecure types, that's most people because, right, three out of four types of attachment are insecure. But we can get to secure. So if we know what is needed in a secure, which I'm going to start with because it's the gold standard, um, we can get there. And again, that's the most important thing to me for people to know is there is a lot of pain and healing to be done when you come from an insecure attachment, but mm -hmm. it can be done and you can get to secure. I love that. And even like prior to this conversation, like I didn't even realize that. Like I didn't, like I thought everyone's somewhere on the spectrum and like you just wiggle your way to like a healthier place, but that like it's really changes possible within, even within these constraints of like, you might have this pattern and that's okay and we can change it. Exactly. And it's really doable. We can't change how we grew up. So that, that's always the pain comes from, mm -hmm. I can't redo that, but we can change the type of parent, the type of friend, the kind of relationships we have. So that again is, is my most important. And now I can go into what the types are. Perfect. So first and foremost is secure. The gold standard, I want to say from my experience, both as a person, and as a therapist, I think it's not a huge percentage of the population. So mm -hmm. don't feel bad if you didn't get okay. secure attachment. All right. Disclaimer. I like that. Okay. <laughs> so what makes a secure attachment? It's not perfect parents. So let's just already like scratch that. There is no such thing as perfect. The mm -hmm. two ingredients that I think are the most important in a secure attachment are mm -hmm. consistency and presence. What does that mean as a parent? Who might you know to have a secure uh, attachment? These are the kind of people where it's not the mom doesn't work or the dad's always home or they're always saying the right thing. It's mm -hmm. that there's a sense from this child that these people are consistent. Mm -hmm. They are there when they're there. They are there in a way that feels safe to me. And when they're not there, I feel safe because I know mom is away sometimes, but her love is not away from me. She is there when she is not there. Mm -hmm. And when she is there, she is present, which is a key ingredient. Emotionally present, being emotionally present with anybody in your life changes relationships. Mm -hmm. So that means I can hear what you have to give. I can validate that. And what's important from a caretaker, which becomes different in other relationships is I know my role. I'm the parent to the child. I take their feelings in. They don't have to take mine. Mm -hmm. So the good that I have to give a validation of those kinds of feelings I can give, but this is the kind of mom who says, oh, you had a hard day and doesn't start telling you about her day. Mm -hmm. This is about you. I'm present with you. Whatever my stuff is, I can put aside for a moment to mm -hmm. hear your stuff. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that a secure mom, dad, never gets triggered, but they mm -hmm. also might notice that, might tell you that, and mm -hmm. might then again be present with you and be able to contain themselves for you. So mm -hmm. that's the gold standard in relationships. And people who grew up like this, who had the secure attachment, had consistent and validating and contained parents, they will find somebody also who comes from a secure home. So they match up with each other. Question. Yes. When you, you say consistent, validating, and, and contained, so is that all under the consistency? Because I thought there were just two ingredients, which was consistency and presence. And I'm like, okay, now there's more ingredients. Yeah, it's but really I, worth for the same thing. Exactly, you're right. You're saying it's all the same, the consistent, the, meaning the consistency is not that they're always home or they're always this. It's that they're consistently validating, except for when they mess up, but then they apologize. Um, they're consistently contained that there's a safe place for like, you know, that you can talk to them. And if they do get triggered, like you said, they'll let you know, they'll be able to come back and apologize. They're emotionally regulated themselves. Emotion exactly. And Couldn't say it better. Emotionally regulated. That is the key. That consistent emotional regulation. Okay. My stuff doesn't become your stuff. Right. And they, do, they understand that there's a two-way relationship, but it's not an equally two-way relationship. Meaning I'm the parent to you. You're not the parent to me. You can share your emotional burdens with me, but I don't have the same liberty with you because exactly. I want to feel safe. Exactly. So okay. in a relationship later on, like a romantic relationship, mm -hmm. if somebody has that base, they can contain themselves. 
they can share their own, but they also know where the boundaries lie. This mm -hmm. is me. This is you. We're not going to be a codependent cool force because we each have our base. We're safe. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to give you a fun disclaimer. What I think is a fun disclaimer. You're not going to find this in a rom-com. It's not like the fun relationship, right? So there's, there's no not books with these characters. Right. right. It's not dramatic. It's not dramatic. And therefore, unfortunately, as a society, we don't even know we're looking for this because mm -hmm. this sounds boring. So really, when we hear it, right, doesn't that sound beautiful? Uh -huh. Like, I keep my own, you keep your own, we share, we validate, but it doesn't just mesh on to each other. We're mm -hmm. not constantly triggered because we have our basis of mm -hmm. security, of safety, of knowing what's mine, what's yours, that there can be consistency in life, that there can be safety. So secure, again, it's the gold standard. It's not the typical, though, unfortunately. Correct. Now, just a quick question. So in terms of, let's say, a, a relationship, like a marriage, the people are, it's not exactly like the parent child, even if you're secure, and you're going for a secure, because there is more of a two way relationship, correct, where I'm sharing vulnerabilities with you, you're sharing them with me, whereas parent child, it's I parent child can share it to parent parent is not necessarily sharing to child. Is that is that correct? Exactly correct. And the way that it would look, I would say, like, uh, for a married couple or a dating couple is Hey, hon, I had a really hard day. Oh, why don't you tell me about it? And mm -hmm. again, not that I also had a really hard day. Do you want to hear about mine? Um, mm -hmm. Because I can contain for a moment. And then I might share because I'm not the parent. So I have the right here. Have, okay, so I love it. But it's mine. And I can hold yours first. I can contain myself. I can regulate. Correct. And you saying you had a hard day doesn't necessarily trigger me to right away have to respond about myself or Correct. something else. Correct. There's space for the other. Exactly. Space for the other. Yeah, I love that. Okay. And okay. You naturally secure people attract or will find a secure partner. Is that like a rule? <laughs> it is a rule. I, I don't know if it's like written, but it's, it's definitely been said and, and not just by me. Okay. 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 Very good. Um, the next two types, I'm going to try to do together because I view them as two sides of the same coin. They are the rom-com couple, if ever there was, mm -hmm. and um, they find each other as well. Okay. Okay, so the first of these two types, and again, these are insecure attachments. Mm -hmm. um, the first type is what we call anxious. There are other names because attachment theory, like any theory, has had takeoffs. But mm -hmm. after the, for our intents and purposes, to keep it simple, I'm going to call it anxious. Mm -hmm. And an anxious attachment, um, the parent can be validating. They mm -hmm. can be present. What they're missing is consistency. The consistency isn't there. And often these parents have that high emotionality. They are not as able to contain as in a secure mm -hmm. uh, relationship. So they might be the person where you say, I had such a hard day, Ma. And your mom says back, like, oh, my God, me too, right? Like twins. Mm -hmm. And while that doesn't necessarily seem wrong sometimes, it's not helpful for a child in terms of their regulation, in terms of understanding boundaries, in terms of containment and emotional regulation. So this kind of parent, the parent in anxious attachment, is not so consistent. And what we see in small children is if this parent leaves, the child is scared. They're worried. They're not so certain that this person is going to come back and what they'll receive when this person comes back. Are they able to be there for me? Are they going to be somewhat distant? Are they going to make it about them? Is it going to be validating to what I need? So that piece is missing. What we notice also in anxious attachment, these are often families who are enmeshed. Enmeshed is a concept that has to do with boundaries. These are families that don't have many boundaries. Mm -hmm. So what that can look like is when you go to like someone's house and um, it seems really adorable at the table because they're all talking over each other, but in a fun way, but they all know everything about everybody and they're so close. And isn't it nice how close they are? Mm -hmm. But then you realize that one sister is saying like, oh, my sister and her husband are in a fight and I know totally what it's about. And you realize that, that doesn't sound so comfortable. Like, should you know that? Is that really your business? Right. And that's siblings. So it's a little bit different, but from a parent, again, it's that they might not be containing. They might be not necessarily telling their kid like inappropriate things about their life, but about their feelings in a way that could really overwhelm that child. There aren't those appropriate boundaries no. of your stuff is your own um, and kind of staying in that space. So the way that this plays out often in relationships is the anxious party, the anxious partner um, often gets called like clingy 
mm -hmm. or um, a pursuer, they are people who often are said to, in a, like rom-com language, love the chase mm -hmm. because they do feel they're running after something because there's that lack of consistency. There's that lack of emotional presence from a parent. They're mm -hmm. constantly seeking out um, like a partner well, and love. Not present, fully present. So they, they want not, presence. That's right. So they think they're looking for it. And what happens is, and we'll get to the avoidant, which is who they end up choosing. The avoidant, when they are saying like, hey, I'm ready, I'm available to you, the anxious person who's not so used to that gets uncomfortable. So this becomes a person who will say something like, I know I date guys and then I do something, I get rejected. Ugh, I hate that I keep getting rejected. Why does that keep happening to me? I really put myself up out there. I do remember though, there was this date where I said some really weird stuff. I don't know what came over. And I, I just seemed to like maybe want to break. I, he felt like much for me all of a sudden. Um, and I think I like wanted to break up, but I don't know why. And now I don't feel good about the rejection. That mm. pattern is because I want to feel loved. I want to feel secure. I mm. haven't had that experience. So the minute someone says, hey, I'm here. Well, I don't trust that. What does that mean? You're here? Okay, so let me test that. Let's see how that goes. Mm -hmm. So I test it. I may say something strange, something like, that just doesn't make sense for the situation. I might try to push you away, literally, right, in some way. Mm -hmm. And then you leave. And then I say, okay, well, that's what I expected, right? Because mm -hmm. I used to tell my mom things. She totally didn't hear it. She wasn't present for me. That was an expectation I had. I said something to her that was even, like, scarier to see if she could get it. She didn't. Mm -hmm. That's the pattern. That's what I get. So this is anxious, yes? We're still on anxious. So how is that though? Cause that to me sounds like, it sounds avoidant, right? Cause it sounds like they're pushing somebody away. So how is that? Like, how does that add up with being clingy and being a pursuer? Like, that's what I'm confused about. So we're going to discuss and maybe it'll show up clearer when I explain who the anxious, the, who the avoidant is, what real avoidance looks like, because okay. it's true that they switch sometimes. But what happens <laughs> is when someone is, let's say, when the avoidant is uh, who the anxious pursues becomes just present. So we're not talking about that they're becoming too much. The anxious person being anxious about the attachment will view it as too much, test it, see if it's sturdy enough, and then possibly cause a situation that's too much for the avoidant mm -hmm. and therefore kind of feel like they made the rejection happen. Mm -hmm. So it's not really avoidance. It looks like avoidance because what they're avoiding, what they're afraid of is the security that, that may happen because they don't really trust it because they weren't taught to trust it. There was nothing ever fully trust because we only trust when things are consistent. Why would we trust? It's like, you know, you order a salad from a restaurant. It's good one day. It's not good the next day. The next time you order, I don't trust you now, right? right. This salad is not going to be good. Right. So it's the same with this relationship. I trust you. I think, oh, Oh, now mm -hmm. you don't feel present with me. Okay, let me let me even like go harder. Let me see. Like, let's add something into the mix and see. Oh, no, no, no. Now you're not there for me. Okay, I knew it. You're not going to be there for me. Just like mom, dad, whoever wasn't there for me. Okay. So what is the nature of the avoidance? Mm -hmm. So the avoidant is the literal opposite. This is a true blue opposites attract, isn't it, romantic situation. Mm -hmm. So the avoidant comes from a house usually where there was physical presence. They were well taken care of physically, but emotionally, um, these are not the parents who are saying, oh, my day was so hard. Also, they're just not really like listening. They're not taking in because they can, uh, the parents in this situation often will feel overwhelmed by their child's, let's say, emotions, and they shut down. This is a parent who's more um, dissociated. Dissociated is when you get overwhelmed and you can't handle the emotionality. So you sort of check out. So this is, let's say, a mom who's there with the cookies, with the milk. And you say, mom, my day was so bad. And my teacher yelled at me. And they're like, I'm sure it wasn't. I'm sure it was just fine. Mm. And that's not validating, right? That, that right. says, oh, okay, mom likes to hear nice stories. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I shouldn't be so sad. Um, and it, again, societally often gets presented as... Um, yeah, my, you know, my parents were just believers that like, nothing in life is really that bad. And we just pick ourselves up after something happened. But missing that piece of first, I feel validated. First, I feel safe. And then I could maybe pick myself up. Right. 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 So in relationships, this person is often very closed off. 
And they'll say something like, I just believe in privacy. You know, I come from a family where we just don't talk about unpleasant things because why life shouldn't have to be unpleasant, mm -hmm. which can all sound super nice in theory. Mm -hmm. And again, um, you know, in a rom-com seems like, oh, he's so tough and masculine. I don't know why they, they make the avoidant one off in the man, which doesn't turn oh. out to be true either, but he's okay. so masculine. He's just holding it together and listening to her but you realize he's not really listening to her and he doesn't really have a capacity for this. He may very well label her as something like clingy because what he sees is a lot of energy coming his way and he wasn't taught, or again, she wasn't taught, just using the mm -hmm. old model. Mm -hmm. They were not taught people from this situation to be able to contain their own and hear someone else's and validate it. It's, mm -hmm. whoa, that has to be contained. Let me put it over here. Mm -hmm. no, 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 we don't do that, whatever that is. And homes like this is when someone will say, you'll say to your friend, like, are you close with your siblings? We see each other at Hanukkah. We're really nice to each other. Um, do you guys ever talk about anything? Like, if you have a problem, would you call your brother or sister? Probably not. I really don't want to bother them. They're really busy. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I don't really need to talk to people about things. I'm, I'm fine. There's not um, emotional health is not given or emotional development is not given like credence, basically. Yeah. And again, emo like you said before, the difference in security and insecure ones is there isn't the emotional regulation. So Correct. the idea for an avoidant person, a person rather from an avoidant home um, or attachment is I will get overwhelmed. My parents got overwhelmed when we were too sad, too angry, or what they perceived as too sad, too angry. Um, Therefore, emotions are to be extremely contained. Boundaries mm -hmm. are to be extremely put up, right? There's a boundary around everything in these families. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, 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 we don't talk about that. that that's not for here, right? Mm -hmm. Those kinds of homes. So why do these people attract each other? Because of opposites attract. Because maybe this person will teach me boundaries. Maybe that person will help me loosen my own boundaries, and mm -hmm. it seems great and it makes for the best movie and it's what is labeled romance and passion and isn't it beautiful and um what's interesting when you look at like a lot of rom-coms or books is so we see like one person coming on strong the other person being overwhelmed then like you said they seem to maybe switch where the anxious person uh does something that seems a little avoidant or like they're trying to avoid the relationship when really they're usually trying to test it the avoidant person might pursue or look like they're pursuing for a moment, but eventually shut down. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of the rom-com, somehow they've managed to say, no, 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 we want to try this out. But you don't see them playing out in fights, right? We don't see what, what the life looks like. And right. what the life looks like is really just a repeat of this because the anxious person still hasn't been able to heal from that idea of they're not going to contain, they're not going to be able to handle me. Um, I'm going to have emotions, they're going to make it about them, or there won't be any boundaries, I won't feel that kind of safety, there will be no consistency. And the avoidant person says, Oh, no, they're angry again. Oh, angry is bad. This is too much. I need to dissociate. I need to leave. Okay, I'm going for a drive. Uh, I'll come home and the fight will be over. Mm -hmm. And in dating, it can play out um, very much that way of one person seeming really interested, then seeming to not even pull away, but maybe cause a situation that feels highly emotional, highly mm -hmm. reactive. The other party says, whoa, that's a lot for me. You know mm -hmm. what? I, just, I don't think he's for me. I'm so sorry, shopping person. Like, I don't think he's for me because that's, that's somebody's so going to appreciate that emotionality. But I don't think it's me. Um, the, yeah. the classic, it's not my vibe. I don't think this mm -hmm. is my vibe. Um, right. And this is the vibe I think that people are talking about of, I haven't learned how to do this. Mm -hmm. This is a lot for me. So mm -hmm. whether the pursuing, the withdrawing, and they will both say it. They'll both say, right, right. They were right. That wasn't my vibe because I need someone who will accept this much um, of mm -hmm. emotions or can um, put down their boundaries a little to connect. And the other person is thinking, I, I really prefer a ton of boundaries. So this mm -hmm. is too much for me. And the mm -hmm. truth is these people can work. They just need this awareness of what's happening, right? When we take a step back from this, mm -hmm. see what was missing. Um, and it's not that they have to help each other. Each person helps themselves, right? One mm -hmm. person works on too many boundaries in their life and being able to be comfortable with a little bit less, a little more sharing. The other person learns to put up boundaries. Like I don't have to repeat everything that happened on a date to my mother, my sister, my brother. Um, and I can contain a little while still being a person who knows how to share. Mm -hmm. Um, and again, so then they can come to a place of consistency of health. Mm -hmm.
Okay. Um, and yeah, continue. We have the like last type I just want to make sure I get to oh, it. It's called sure. disorganized. Say it again. It's called disorganized. The last. Sure. This uh, happens in homes where there's abuse or neglect. Mm -hmm. And what it is really is like a rapid fire form of anxious avoidance together. So children who come from abuse or neglect really don't know what to expect. Because I came home, I was hugged by my parent, told I'm the best, and then smacked in the face, like literally. So there's, there's no consistency here. Um, one day, my mom said, great job. The next day, she screamed and yelled about it in a way that was really frightening. One day I had dinner, the next day I totally didn't have dinner, nobody was home, nobody realized that I was coming home. So abuse and neglect, because of their lack of consistency, because people are not abusive or neglectful all the time. So there are little pieces of what, what feels secure, what feels like the other attachments, mm -hmm. but really in the least consistent way. And well, without warning and without really understanding what is the triggers, um, can my emotional experience be held contained, right? That's not happening here. Mm -hmm. So in relationships, somebody from a disorganized home will find another person from a disorganized home. Mm -hmm. Like secure, they will find each other. Okay. And they will kind of repeat everything really quickly. So it's, it can look like anxious avoidant, but it's more rapid and less of like an exact pattern. Like they can keep swapping which one is which, um, and again, like it's one day I'm anxious, one day I'm avoidant, one day I'm anxious, one day I'm avoidant because there was nothing consistent. Mm -hmm. So maybe they'll find another disorganized, but they, but their styles are basically disorganized is rapidly switching between avoidance and anxious. Is that true? Because I don't know if it always has to be, but it's basically overall a lack of consistency, mm -hmm. um, a, a, a clear lack of emotional regulation. Mm -hmm. um, because again, that's not something that would have been taught to them. Mm -hmm. um, and those are really the key things that are missing that can be changed. Um, right. coming from and they'll, they'll find somebody that's from another, from a disorganized home. Like they'll find each other, like the secure attachment and like the anxious will find the avoidance. Exactly. But then you said something about that. They'll be rapidly switching between like when they find each other, what was, what does that relationship or dating look like? I'm just curious. Yeah. So it's not as clear in, in the sense of, I don't know that they each have to take on that role all the time, but there will just be a real lack of consistency, a real lack of safety. So, um, I'm so volatile basically because of real, it can claim. really volatile. <laughs> and again, there might be more of like a victim abuser, meaning mm -hmm. where, um, like a clarity to that, but in mm -hmm. terms of for the victim, even, in terms of reacting a certain way, they may not, they may like really switch off because again, in their life, their day to day, um, mm -hmm. they were victimized, but then had like, you know, um, a good day, um, which will happen in an abusive relationship as well, where there are good days. So mm -hmm. the roles seem to switch, but the overall role might be there. Uh, meaning that the victim is not necessarily or at all um, acting the way the abuser would act. Mm -hmm. if that makes sense but there there's a lack of consistency in their action again of course there's no victim blaming or shaming it's just when people say why would someone be at, uh, be attracted to somebody who's abusive because unfortunately it is somewhat of what they know mm -hmm. and the lack of consistency that abusers show that's what they know that's the part of like oh what does it mean oh so they knew being hit so they they wanted to be hit no of course not nobody oh. wants that nobody's asking for that ever so i hope that that comes up clear that i would never say that but um, what they're used to is the inconsistency of the behavior of one day being like abusers generally are known to be really kind one day and then horrible to the person the next day. And the victim in that situation might have had a very similar upbringing to that. So it feels not just like the norm, but it also feels sort of relatable, sort of like that's what there is out there. That's that makes sense. And mm -hmm. maybe I can fix it from the relationship because people are always trying to fix. It's not that they're like just resigned to it. It's mm -hmm. that, oh, these are relationships, but I'll fix it from within. I'll be really kind to this person. So they mm -hmm. might also then be kind. Right, like we, we try to fix our past. But is that in all of those attachments or just mostly in the um, so disorder? Secure doesn't need fixing. So I would right. say in all the insecure, yes. I think that all the, the avoidance. attempt to fix. Yes, which in, in right. trauma therapy we call reenactment is that mm -hmm. the only way out is through. So I'll recreate what I know because that's how I'm going to get out of it. That's how I'm going to fix it. So to be clear, anybody from an abusive, neglectful or avoidant or anxious home is always understanding that something feels off. I want to fix it. But their belief 
um, is that the only way out is through. So if I sort of recreate it, I may find a way out of it and we may get to a healthier place. Right. It's so interesting that you're saying that it's because the only way out is through. Because I always heard that like cliche line as like a good thing, you know, like the only way out is through. Right. But it's not exactly like a good mantra. So it's not in the sense of anything when you're going in blind is like not a good thing. Right. So mm -hmm. it's, it's if I say like, oh, I swam in a pool that burnt my eyes. So let me swim in it again because the only way out is through. That's mm -hmm. when you get into a situation that doesn't end up being helpful. But if I say, listen, the only way out is through. So I'm going to put on goggles. I'm going to have awareness. I'm mm -hmm. going to work on being a stronger swimmer myself and work on my breathing. Then when mm -hmm. the only way out is through, I might get to security. I might get to a different place. Mm -hmm. So we're never blaming people to be clear. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing about attachment that says this is your fault or I can't believe you entered this relationship. It right. only makes sense that you did. This is what you know. This is what really felt as safe as possible to you because our parents are who we trust, who we think should be safe. And only when we can say, hey, there was some pain in this. This wasn't fully safe. Can we make the changes? Can mm -hmm. we be different than where we come from? Cool. I'm glad I asked because I hear what you're saying. Like basically, yes, the only way out is through, but now let's do it the right way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, like don't go in with oxygen. I want oxygen to talk much more about this, but I don't want to go over our, our predetermined time. Um, so definitely let's wrap up and let's, but we're going to have a part two about this. Basically I want to discuss how we can meander our way through, I guess, and make things healthier. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, so I find that basically awareness is, is the real key to mm -hmm. change. Um, and in relationships, which we can talk about like another time, there are just a lot of topics um, like finances, like things that become fights. That if mm -hmm. we have awareness, if we know this is how this was spoken about in my home, this mm -hmm. was triggering to me as a child, this was triggering to my parents, this mm -hmm. was the breakdown of responsibility, right? It changes how we relate to people. Because when we're really fully aware of where we come from, what mm -hmm. does feel right about that? What doesn't feel so right? Where was my pain? Where was I secure? Um, or felt loved or validated in this area, then we know what we have, what tools we have, what we may want to change, and mm -hmm. what we can utilize. Correct. Okay, so we're going to discuss that in a part two. And my last question before I forget is like, is it that an anxious person chases, like, it, I'm, not, I'm sorry, is it that an anxious person, is it correct that a person, let's say from anxious should work through something with an avoidant? Or is everyone's goal is to find a secure partner? Do you get what I'm saying? Like, what um, is the yeah, idea? So any partner can become secure. That's what I would say, right? Let's say an anxious and avoidant walk into couples therapy. Can mm -hmm. they get help? Yes, because just noticing this pattern will help the both of them be mm -hmm. able to become what's secure because what is secure? Consistency. We can all become more consistent. We mm -hmm. can all learn to contain and emotionally regulate. So those are the only things needed. Therefore, any of the insecure can become secure. Mm -hmm. And we don't have to break up with someone saying, oh, I see the pattern. Oh, I can't believe I'm with an avoidant. It's really, hey, by the way, we're anxious and avoidant. What do you know? Welcome. <laughs> um, would we love to become secure? Could we work mm -hmm. on that, right? Mm -hmm. um, and, and like you said, we can discuss in part two, even when right. one person changes, how that changes the dynamic. Cool. Okay. Okay. And so you're saying basically the goal is not, if you identify whoever's listening or any, right? Like you identify as an avoidant or as an anxious and you're dating, you don't need to say, okay, I must find a secure partner right now because right. technically you won't even be attracted to that person. You might be attracting somebody. If you're an anxious, you might be attracting an avoidant. And then the question is, once you see your pattern, are you, are one or both of you willing to work on it, work together through it? Yeah, exactly. And again, um, Am I, we can only really ask ourselves also. So first and foremost, I always want to say, notice your own first, that's really helpful. And what am I comfortable doing to change that? Or even in noticing, what does that feel like to notice? Oh, hey, I just listened to, you know, anxious makes sense for my family. I think, I think I might be one of those. What does that mean for me? And what do I want to heal from? What was the pain and knowing that my attachment was anxious, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's really, I would say it's the awareness. And the first step is just really noticing for yourself that that's actually a little hard, right? To hear that I had a disorganized attachment. That's pretty painful. Um, mm -hmm. What is it like to sit with knowing that? Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay, amazing. So we will definitely have a part two. Okay. Thank you so much, Karen. This Thank you really so much for having me. So like, I definitely like read textbooks on this back in the day when I was going to school. Um, but I never had it this clear. And, and it's uh, really, really important and mind blowing. And 
it's very relatable. Like, I just feel like it just makes sense. It's very down to earth. That's it doesn't, the most important thing. It doesn't feel like a theory. Relatable. Right. Life, I, I found it always a little bit dry until I read ones that like really connected it to regular life. And then I find it so yeah, helpful. That's so helpful. Thank you so, so much. Thank you everyone for listening and everyone that will listen. And we will definitely have a part two. So I guess whoever is listening can send in their questions um, via the WhatsApp status, Instagram, direct message, either myself or OK Clarity or Karen. And we will get your questions and we will address them in a part two, as well as discuss how people can move towards secure. Make sense? Yeah, we're good? Yes. Yeah. Everybody have a great rest of the day. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.